What's going on? Today I want to talk about transmission coolers, specifically in the WRX with a CVT transmission. But I'll cover information applicable to most cars and some theory of operation that might be good to know regardless. I'll cover the reason you might need a CVT cooler, the different ways that you can install it, and answer some common questions. What I have here is the Mishimoto transmission cooler for the WRX CVT. There's a few options out there, including custom setups that can cost you much less but will of course require you to come up with your own mounting configurations and might not be worth the price difference or the headache. I chose this particular cooler because it comes ready to install in a fairly straightforward way and it's a pretty popular choice, although it's not perfect and I will cover why in a bit. The first question you might ask is, why do you even need a CVT cooler in the first place? And I don't think that a CVT cooler is a blanket necessity for everyone with this car and whether you need it or not will depend on where you live and how you drive your car. The transmission fluid in a CVT has a lot of functions. It has to cool and lubricate the transmission and associated components. It has to allow proper friction between the pulleys and the high torque chain, and it has to serve as hydraulic fluid responsible for the clamping pressures of the pulleys. Because of this inherent design in the CVT, it's just as important for the fluid to come to proper temperature to allow this necessary friction as it is to keep the fluid from getting too hot that it burns and deteriorates prematurely. If you remember how the CVT operates, there are two pulleys that drive a high torque chain, so those pulleys need enough clamping force so that the chain doesn't slip. This is an important difference of CVTs versus traditional transmissions. The colder the CVT fluid is, the higher its viscosity, which robs the engine of power and makes for clunky operation of the transmission, partly because of the frictional characteristics of the colder fluid and partly because of the delayed torque converter lockup, which also decreases gas mileage. Obviously, having the fluid too hot comes with its own issues. CVT fluid has to act as hydraulic fluid, it has to lubricate and cool, but it also has to have a high friction coefficient. If the fluid is prematurely broken down due to prolonged operation at high temperatures, then the fluid will start losing its ability to perform these functions. This can cause reduced pulley clamping force, increased wear, which of course increases metal shavings in the fluid, the grates the seals, and the oil will lose its ability to cool, which of course speeds up this whole cycle, so it's a matter of time before the transmission suffers a catastrophic failure. The whole point here is that the fluid has an operating temperature and that either extreme, cold or hot, can cause issues. So given how WRXs are all-wheel drive vehicles with a large market in cold areas, it makes sense that Subaru would add a way to bring the fluid temperatures up quicker. That's done through the use of the stock CVT cooler slash warmer. The reason you even need this to begin with is that the transmission takes much longer to come to temperature than the engine because it's not undergoing internal combustion like the engine is. So because the engine coolant heats up much faster than your CVT fluid, the stock CVT cooler uses that heat to warm the transmission fluid. So let's see how the stock system works. This is what the cooler looks like. It doesn't look very impressive and that's because it's a pretty simple device. Inside this cooler, we have both engine coolant and CVT fluid. The engine coolant flows through this cooler through the large diameter lines and the transmission fluid flows through the narrow ones. Obviously, the two fluids don't mix. What happens here is that as your car warms up, your coolant gets hot much faster than the CVT fluid. As the coolant flows through the cooler, it heats up the CVT fluid flowing through there. This speeds up the time it takes your transmission to come to operating temperature. So it's a passive system that relies on the active cooling system of the engine because obviously your radiator is at the front of the car and has large fans on it. At some point, your coolant temperature will stabilize and hopefully your CVT temperature will stay well below that. But obviously, Obviously, if it doesn't, then the coolant will work the other way and start actually cooling the CVT fluid. Now, you can probably imagine that it's just not that effective at cooling. Like I said, it's a passive system. It's very small. It's bolted to the engine in a hot area that doesn't get airflow. So its main function really is to warm the transmission fluid quicker. So the first question you might ask is, why isn't there a proper cooler to begin with in the car? Obviously, any extra item added to the car adds to the cost of it. So this is one factor that comes into play. Another is that for people who are not modding their car, tracking their car, or driving spiritedly more than the average person, the cooler just isn't necessary. Now, I get it, this is a WRX, but if you added everything the CVT should have to make it a track-worthy car from the factory, it would look a lot like the STI and cost you more. So it's up to us 
to add those little things that will make the car more reliable if we're gonna go beyond using the car as a daily driver. If I use my car simply to get to and from work or run errands, my CVT temperature won't even reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit before I get to work. And that's when the temperature outside is around 50 degrees. So if that's all I did with a car, then the CVT cooler would be a waste of money for me and not worth it in terms of risk versus reward. After all, you're adding an extra part that can break and possibly jeopardize your warranty. On the flip side of that, if you take your car to the track and monitor your CVT temp, you will see that the fluid will get hot fast and the stock cooler will not be able to properly cool the transmission in those types of conditions with sustained higher RPMs, leading to the degradation of the fluid and premature failure of the CVT. That's because your transmission is doing more work, which of course generates more heat. That's why trucks that are used for towing usually have transmission coolers to deal with the extra heat generated by the transmission when it's towing. Of course, we're not going to be towing with our cars, but sustaining high RPMs for longer will have the same effect on the transmission. If you're taking your car to the track or doing heavy spirited driving sessions, you can considerably increase the temperature of the fluid, decreasing its ability to properly lubricate, increasing your chance of slipping the transmission, and of course deteriorating the fluid at a faster rate, putting the various seals within the transmission in jeopardy. If you decide that you can benefit from a transmission cooler, you'll have to decide which configuration you want to use for the installation. You can run the cooler in line with a stock warmer, you can bypass that warmer altogether, or you can have a thermostat controlled setup. This is what an inline installation would look like. The CVT fluid still runs to the warmer, but the outlet of the stock cooler goes to the aftermarket CVT cooler, so the fluid can be cooled further before going back to the transmission. As you can imagine, your transmission will take a bit longer to warm up with this setup, but it's better than not having the warmer there at all if you live in a place with moderate temperatures. This is your in-between setup, which is ideal if you live in a place without extremes at either end. Since this setup uses the stock cooler, if you find yourself stuck in traffic in a really hot environment where the aftermarket cooler doesn't have any airflow, you'll still slightly benefit from the controlled coolant temperature. This is the simplest installation option. If you live in a mostly hot environment and you will be careful and mindful of warming up your transmission before driving aggressively, then you might consider bypassing the warmer altogether. This configuration will achieve the coolest temperatures because the aftermarket cooler will not have to work against the heat from the stock cooler. So it's best for those who will put the car through the rigors of the track or who live in extremely hot places and those who don't mind monitoring their temperatures. Your CVT fluid will go straight to the aftermarket cooler, so you will need to cap the two CVT fluid port on the stock cooler. One bonus of using this configuration is that since you're completely removing the stock cooler from the equation, you eliminate any possibility of CVT fluid and coolant contamination due to a cracking stock cooler. The configuration that I'll be going with is the hybrid configuration that includes a thermostat. If you want the best of both worlds or have any sort of reservations about the install, this would be the way to go. You would be installing a thermostat that would control CVT fluid flow. When the CVT fluid temperature is below 180 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermostat is closed and bypasses the aftermarket cooler. This will allow the transmission to come to temperature properly, which is very important as we discussed. This thermostat will still send 10% of the fluid through the aftermarket market cooler to maintain pressure but when your transmission is warm and reaches 180 degrees the thermostat will open and allow 100% of the fluid through to the aftermarket cooler if you want a hands-off approach and live in a place with pretty dynamic temperatures then this would be a good configuration and the one that I personally chose if you choose this cooler you should know that there's many complaints that these lines don't hold up well over time so you should upgrade the lines at the time of the install or at your earliest convenience I cover the parts that I used in my installation video. You will need about a quart of the proper high torque CVT fluid. If you take anything from this video, it should be that the fluid is super important. The fluid as of right now is only available at dealers. They get them in five gallon pails, so you need to bring your own container and ask them nicely to sell you a quart or two. If you don't have success, at one dealer, try another, but you shouldn't have issues. And if you do, remind them that cars don't last forever and you will keep them in mind when it comes time to trade up. This is not an item that you want to experiment with, so resist the temptation to use a replacement fluid. One question that always comes up is, will this void my warranty? 
First of all, no modification voids your warranty in a blanket way. A better way to ask the question would be, will this cooler make it more likely that a warranty claim for a transmission problem can be denied? But the answer is still not clear cut. Because of the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, a dealer has to prove a direct link between the modification and the failure. So if your transmission blows up and you bring it in with the cooler installed, that link is not that far of a stretch. That said, because the warranty claims are paid by the manufacturer, in this case Subaru, and not the dealer, there's big inconsistency from dealer to dealer as to how lenient they are. For every story of someone having an issue fixed on a warranty with tons of mods installed, you'll hear one of someone getting denied. To increase your chances of success, you should develop a positive relationship with a dealer and if you're unlucky enough to have a transmission casualty, a safer bet would be to remove the cooler altogether before taking it into the dealer as they would have no way of knowing it was installed in the first place. Remember that installing the cooler is not a license to add unlimited power to the platform. There's other limiting factors to consider, but the cooler can help the transmission last longer as long as you're modding smartly and properly caring for your car. I want to give a big shout out to the fine people over at the WRX CVT group. Everything I shared in this video is based on my experience, my research, and the experience and knowledge shared by members of that group. So thanks a lot, guys. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.